Hey guys, today I'm back trying out the Plasma demo, and I saw that this game had a GPS receiver. That got me thinking, and I wanted to try making a guided missile, so let's get right into it. So starting out here, the first thing I wanted to do was put down a cube, and the reason for that is I can actually stretch it out and start to work on the rocket here. You'll notice I'm putting down some thrusters in the bottom, and once I had four of those on there, I set their power to 100%. This wasn't exactly the best idea, and you can see it just shot up and away. But interestingly enough, you'll also notice it starts to curve in the air. That's because I have absolutely no stabilization and all the thrusters are just max power. Now this is the first thing I wanted to work on here, so I started out and I set their power down to 20% to make it slightly more manageable, and after I did that, you can see I put a gyroscope on top. Now the gyroscope is going to let me see the angle the thrusters are at, and as the rocket starts to turn, I should be able to correct for that by pushing thrusters a little bit harder on the other side. Now there's a lot going on already, because you'll also notice I'm putting out some LCDs, and this is going to be so I can see the angle outputs coming right out of the gyroscope. After I had those in place, I just set their number inputs here, and once I did that, I wanted to give it a test, and I couldn't really tell if it was working perfectly, but I did see that the angles were changing, so at the very least, the gyroscope did seem to be working. Now, I ended up figuring out that the two angles I cared about here were the pitch and the roll, and you can see I'm dragging the roll over to the LCD now, and giving it a test as I start to tilt this over, notice the number on the bottom is representing the angle that it's tilted side to side, and the LCD on top is displaying the angle that it's tilted back and forth. Those are the two angles I care about, and with that done, I started hooking this up to the thrusters here. Now, I went for a very crude setup here, and I basically just set it so that if it starts to tilt back, it starts to turn on the thrusters in the back as well to try to correct for that. And this didn't go super well, and it's because I don't have the thrusters on the other side turning on, so if it starts to over-rotate, it doesn't really even try to correct that. So to make that work, I ended up using a math expression node, and I'm not going to get into math super heavy in this video, but you can see what it's doing is actually negating the angle input. What that's going to do is end up turning the thrusters on in the front instead, and that's going to give me the opposite output of the back. And you can see already, it's starting to work. It's trying to keep itself upright, but it is still able to tilt to the left, and that's what I wanted to fix up next. Now to do that, it was a very similar process, and you can see what I did here is put in another math expression node, and I ended up setting it to negate the input. With that done, I ended up just figuring out what thrusters corresponded to what, and after that, I just needed to mesh all of the inputs together with another math expression node. That was a little bit more work than I thought it was going to be, but after not too much time, you can see here it's starting to stabilize. The problem with this though, is you'll notice it's oscillating back and forth a lot, and even though it's trying to stay upright, it never really gets there. And after some thinking, I realized the problem is that the more my rocket turns, the harder my thrusters are pushing. The issue with that is since I have no dampening factor, I basically just created an oscillator, and that's why it starts going back and forth like this. Now to hopefully get rid of that oscillation, I wanted to put in a PID controller here. Now, the PID controller is actually kind of a lot to explain, but the main purpose of it is to try to get rid of that oscillation. So as I start to get closer to my target, or as I start to go faster, it tries to limit that speed and dampen that oscillation. Now trying to hook it up here didn't really go so well at first, and I tried changing some of the factors on it, but I really couldn't seem to get a good grip on this at first, and it was really starting to confuse me. So after a lot of messing around here, I actually decided to move away from the rocket for a second and just make a very simple PID controller setup here to try to figure out what I'm doing. And that's what I'm building up now. So I'm just building up a simple base to set on the ground, and after I did that, you can see I'm putting down a motor here. Now the purpose of this motor is going to be to just freely spin back and forth and not be powered at all. What I want is to basically have that act as a bearing, and on this tube that I just put on the motor, you can see I'm putting down another tube. This one's facing straight up though, and the plan is going to be to put down two thrusters in the sides of it and try to keep it upright. This is a really simple task for the PID controller, and what I want to do is try to figure out a way to get it to just stand up and not oscillate at all. So setting it up here, you can see I'm able to just swing this back and forth, and now all I need to do is get the PID controller hooked up. And I ended up messing around with the values on this for a long time. These values just adjust the way that it ends up getting to its target, and I ended up kind of accidentally figuring out that setting the derivative term really high ends up getting this to just stand straight up, and you can see there's very little oscillation. And with that, it was pretty much time to get this ported over to the rocket. Now, I threw a motor on the rocket here, and I tried creating a stand where I could actually have it turn on both axes, but this ended up being really confusing, and it wasn't really making my life that much easier. So I went back to my simple design here, and you can see it's starting to stabilize a little bit, and I am kind of getting something to work on one axis. It's a little bit slow, though, and I also realized that if I want to mesh in the side-to-side -side controls, it'd probably be best if I actually added more thrusters on and moved them further out from the center. So that's what I did here, and you can see after a few tests where it sort of just randomly spun around, I was starting to get something that was working. You can see it was able to stabilize straight up and down, and if I pick up the rocket and turn it 90 degrees, it's still able to stabilize. This tells me that it's probably ready to test on the ground here, and you can see now taking it off the stand, giving it a test, it does go straight up in the air. So with my crude stabilization system built, now it's time to add in the GPS tracker, and you can see I put that node in here. Now my plan with this GPS tracker is that I'm going to be setting up a cube, and you can see I put a GPS tag on the cube. Now, my 
my GPS tracker, I'm going to set to track this tag, which means that my rocket is always going to be trying to hit this cube. So after I got that all set up here, I added on some more LCDs again, and this is so I can start looking at the data coming out of the GPS tracker. So if I ended up using the distance and direction and testing it out here, you can see it is beginning to work. As I move around the rocket, the angle is changing a little bit, and also the number on the bottom, that's the distance, and as I bring it closer, it does seem to get smaller. So the data that's coming out of here does seem to be good, but now I just need to figure out a way to get the angles I need to rotate down the rocket. And in order to do that, I went into paint here and I started sketching some stuff out. Now I built up some axes here, and after I did that, you see I put down a couple of points. The top point is going to be my rocket, and the bottom one is going to be the GPS tag. So you can see now, I just need to figure out a way to both get the direction that I need to turn to the side, and the amount that I need to tilt down. Now this information is actually accessible within the GPS controller, but it was giving me weird values at first, so I just wanted to do the math on my own and make sure it was going to work. So starting out here, I ended up figuring out both the angles I need to face to the side and down, and once I got those figured out, now I just need to implement it in the game. This was not going to be easy, and once I got that in degrees here, you can see it is mostly making sense. Now with that done, it's just time to try to get these angles actually set up relative to my formulas, and once I built that all in here, I wanted to give it a test, and it did seem to be okay. You can see the number on top is actually representing the tilt now, and as I start to move up, you can see the number gets smaller. That means that it needs to move more down, and now it's zero degrees, and that makes sense, because that means I need to face straight up and down, but I'm right on top of it, so it actually seemed to be calculating that correctly. That was about the last thing that went right though, and after that, it was just a lot of pain. Nothing seemed to be going correctly, and every time I moved something around or tried it out, it just flew away randomly and didn't seem to actually take the values I wanted. So I got this thing back on my stand here, and I wanted to give it a test without it flying around. And already, it sort of was working. You can see when I'm on the ground here, the rocket is facing towards the cube, but if I move it up even a little bit, it starts just rotating around and not really even working anymore. But if I move it back, you'll notice it faces towards it, but backwards. And I had to run through my math a little bit, but that's when I realized that because of the way that I'm using arctangent here, and the way that arctangent repeats itself twice per rotation, the rocket kind of gets confused, it doesn't know whether it needs to face forward or backward, and my math just tells it to face forward here. Now this is sort of bad, because it means that the rocket will only work if it's facing directly forward, and if it's only targeting something below it. Now I could almost live with this, but there is another major problem with this that's causing it to break. Before, I had the stand aligned so that it was perfectly on the x-axis. As I start to move it off it though, my angles start to be incorrect, and I noticed already it was not really working. Sometimes it would just start flipping around with no reason at all, and sometimes it just wouldn't even face the right target at all. Between these two pretty major problems, I actually wanted to delete everything I had here and try it again. This time I'm using the angle coming straight out of the GPS, and that represents the tilt and the direction. This basically is just saving me a step, and once I got those in place here, it at least seemed to make enough sense. Now you'll notice there's another montage here, because it did take a while for me to figure out what represented what, and I threw in a directional indicator as well, and this is reporting which direction my rocket is facing. If I subtract that angle off from the direction the GPS gives me, that's telling me how many degrees you need to turn to the left or the right in order to face the target. Now, the math on this really wasn't that much better, but finally here, I actually had something that seemed to be working. Now, you'll notice I'm just pasting my rocket around now, and these two LCDs are giving me the angles I need to face. The number on top was telling me how far to push the nose down, and the number on the bottom was telling me how far to move to the left or the right. And I have no really good way of explaining how this is actually working, but you just gotta take my word for it that the numbers it was giving me did make enough sense. Now the last thing I needed to conquer here was to figure out how to get this to work as the rocket starts to tilt. Now as it tilts down, the numbers are actually still valid, but as the rocket starts to rotate on its side, that's where I need the numbers to start meshing together and flipping around. Now I did find a somewhat convenient way to do this in the math, but it kinda took a while to make sure that it was actually working properly, and I also figured out that the rocket still has a minor bug where it can only go from the east to the west. If you try to go from the west to the east, it ends up doing the absolute opposite movements of what you want, and then it fails. But you can see now, I ended up moving all the way over to the right side here, and I wanted to unpin it and give it a test. And finally here, you can see it does target the cube, and it actually almost runs into it. It missing it by a little bit is actually okay, that's just my control systems not being perfect, but honestly after a few tries, it was pretty promising, and the last thing I wanted to do was figure out a system to get the rocket to launch straight up in the air, and only then turn and face its target. Now fortunately, I actually designed the system before already, and that was the one that just had to go straight up. So in order to do that, I actually used a lot of gates here, and these gates are basically just switching between the two values, so it's either trying to face its target, or it's trying to go straight up in the air. And once again, it took a lot of trial and error, even though I probably should have had this immediately, but with not too much work, it did sort of go straight up, and then I could see it start to go out and try to face its target. So to give it a final test here, what I wanted to do was actually bury the cube somewhere out in the forest here, and see if the rocket 
rocket would target it. So put it out there and you can see now I launched up the rocket and it seemed to actually go right to it. Now it was kind of hard to tell where this is actually going. So what I wanted to do here is put in a docking station and sit on this as it goes. So put that down here and I want to give it a test. So hit the button and you can see now it launches away, but I do miss the target by kind of a lot. After some thinking, I realized that the weight of the docking station is throwing it off a little bit. So I just use the counterweight here and you can see after that, it actually goes right into the forest and this time it almost directly hits the target. Now I wanted to give it another test too, going right up this mountain, but now I'm just sort of flipping around here and it's not really working. That was the problem that I described before and it's because it's going north to south, but it really only works going east to west. So it's a little unfortunate, but at the very least I can bury the cube in the forest here and after that, it was time to start messing with the aesthetics of this. Now, unfortunately, I lost a little bit of footage here, but you can see what I ended up doing. So firstly, I painted the whole thing black just to make it a little bit cooler. I also set the time to night, and you can see I ended up putting this glowing orb on top, and at nighttime, it looks pretty good. Now, I was having some minor stability problems since I ended up making it taller, but I just messed around with the PID values a little bit again, and after some more tuning around, I actually got something that was pretty similar to before. Now, in this test, you could actually see it ended up hitting the cube in the distance. It ended up just being the perfect plate, and you see now some final shots of me actually shooting this away. So guys, thanks for watching. This is a project that I've actually been kind of trying to do for a while in a few other games, but I couldn't really find a way to do it where I could actually get a proper GPS working, so I'm glad I could actually get that going here. So if you have any other video ideas, make sure to leave them down below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below as well, and otherwise, until next time.